Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the mechanism of arsenic poisoning. And actually, there's a lot of different mechanisms, but we're going to look at two. The first one is a very minor one. This is actually how arsenic actually disrupts glycolysis, but there's a major mechanism of arsenic poisoning, and that's uh, the disruption of the TCA cycle. So we'll actually look at that. First, let's look at a couple of things about the form of arsenic. The two most common forms of arsenic are arsenate and arsenite. Now, arsenate, if you look at its chemical structure, other than the central atom of arsenic, it's going to resemble the molecule of phosphate very closely. Again, the central atom is different, but we still have four oxygens and a net charge of minus three on the molecule. Okay. Um, arsenite is a more reduced form of the arsenic, but again, it still has three negative charges. It turns out that the arsenite is going to be important in, or I should say deadly, in the TCA cycle, whereas this form of arsenic, the arsenate, is going to be the one that disrupts glycolysis. So let's first talk about the glycolytic reaction that is most uh, deleteriously affected, and that is the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Uh, this enzyme, I believe, is number six in the pathway. It converts glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate with an inorganic phosphate into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Notice what it's doing. It's actually taking, using an oxidation with NAD, but it's taking this phosphate right here and essentially swapping it with this hydrogen on this carbon. So this carbon will no longer have a hydrogen. It'll actually have this phosphate. And what this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is going to allow is net ATP generation uh, through the payoff phase of glycolysis. So it turns out that from the perspective of this enzyme, um, the enzyme can't really distinguish well between phosphate and arsenate because they are so chemically similar. So instead of adding phosphate, if we've got a lot of arsenate floating around the cytoplasm, which is where glycolysis occurs, this enzyme, the same enzyme up here, can actually add the arsenate on this carbon instead of phosphate. And so what you'll end up with is this molecule, which is called 1-arsenol-3-phosphoglycerate, which looks almost identical to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, except for this phosphate is now replaced by an arsenate. Okay? Now, obviously, you cannot make ATP from this. And in any case, what will happen is you'll have a non-enzymatic hydrolysis where water will actually come and knock off this arsenate. Again, you'll, you'll generate more arsenate, which can then go back and do this same reaction. Again, this arsenate can go back over here. But what also happens is you get 3-phosphoglycerate. Um, normally in glycolysis, what will happen after you generate 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is you'll have the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. Phosphoglycerate kinase... Uh, will actually convert 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate into 3-phosphoglycerate, but it will generate an ATP in the process, okay? And you can go back to glycolysis and look at that. By having this non-enzymatic hydrolysis, we get directly to 3-phosphoglycerate, and so what happens is, is for every molecule of arsenate that enters this, we shortchange glycolysis 1 ATP. Okay, so again, this is really bad because due to this non-enzymatic hydrolysis, this arsenate can then go back and react again with glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to form more of this compound. Now, in general, just due to glycolysis, this is not completely toxic. I mean, it's certainly not good. Um, it's not really lethal. Uh, it's just going to shortchange you energy. But the kicker is how arsenic actually disrupts the TCA cycle, and this is really bad. So here we have the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. This is actually the enzyme 3 or E3 component of it, and the same thing can actually happen to the alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase enzyme in the TCA cycle. This is the cofactor, at least part of it, dihydrolipoamide. Um, this is normally going to be involved in um, binding one of the uh, binding the acetyl group and then transferring it to uh, coenzyme A, but what can happen is these two thiol groups can actually attack this arsenic atom right here. Okay, when they attack this atom, these two OHs are lost as two waters, and what you have now is this dihydrolipoamide, the sulfur here bound to this arsenic, and the sulfur here bound to the same arsenic. Again, this oxygen here is still there. Okay. This is really bad. This is called the arsenate chelate on the enzyme. Um, 
arsenic, even though it's a not, it's a, a metalloid technically, it's behaving here more as a metal. And so what we say is that this arsenic is actually chelated to the enzyme, and it's a very very strong interaction. This isn't going anywhere. So more or less, you could consider this um, suicide inhibition because. This is not coming off, and it basically kills the enzyme's activity. And really, by, by killing the TCA cycle, if you have enough of this arsenite, uh, you basically kill metabolism. Now, if you actually catch this poisoning early on, you can add a drug. This is actually an antidote called 2,3-dimercaptopropanol, and I'm not sure why it's called BAL, but that's the abbreviation for it. And it's this molecule right here in blue. What this molecule can then do, once you already have this arsenic chelated on here, is these two sulfurs can actually compete for the arsenic. So what they'll do is they actually will have a stronger interaction with the arsenic than these two on the dihydrolipoamide. And so these two sulfurs will then bind the arsenic, as you see right here. And now we have a restored enzyme. So that's how the antidote works. Additionally, uh, notice this arsenic also still has this oxygen with a negative charge. And you also have an OH group on here, which is polar. So you have over here a polar charged molecule, which can easily then be excreted. So that's how this 2,3-dimer captopropanol is going to act as an antidote for arsenite uh, poisoning, which is going to act by being chelated by um, enzyme 3 of either pyruvate dehydrogenase or alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So these are a couple mechanisms by which arsenic actually produces poisoning and its toxic effects in the body. And I want to conclude this video by just telling you a quick story about arsenic poisoning. And I will uh, stipulate this by saying it's not known whether or not this is true, but I did hear this from my U.S. history teacher in, in college as an undergraduate. And again, he said that it wasn't known exactly whether or not all of this is true. What is true is that former President Warren G. Harding, he was a president a long time ago, I don't know the exact year, uh, but he was known for being a womanizer. He, he cheated on his wife with mistresses. And supposedly, uh, his wife found out about this. Well, Warren G. Harding is one of the only presidents, one of the few presidents who's actually died in office. And what's actually hypothesized is that his wife found out about his cheating on her and she actually poisoned him with arsenic. Now again, I'm not trying to, to sully her name or his name, but again, just a little story to go along with the arsenic. It's not known for a fact whether or not that's actually true, but just something interesting to think about. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you for watching.